goes to one. Goes to one, but what about the series? Exactly. And then this one right here, <laughs> this is neither, right? What does the sequence do? It diverges, right? And what does the series do? It diverges as well. So one doesn't necessarily mean the other. What's zero plus two plus zero plus two plus, it gets big. Yes, go ahead. No. Is each term getting smaller? Yeah, so you might be inclined to think that this series converges, right? One plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, that goes to two, right? This right here, this is called the harmonic series. Is it convergent? No, this gets infinitely big. Pretty cool, huh? So you can actually have series where the elements get smaller, but when you add them together, what happens? It keeps on getting bigger. Let's keep moving through geometric land where it's nice and safe, okay? So we, do we need to know Not right now, no. I was just giving you an example where it says, like, just because the terms are getting smaller doesn't mean when you add them together, it converges, the sum converges. So you might have looked at this before. This is the math you looked at before. I'm, I didn't really want to type it out again, so I left it in there. What can we factor out on the left? Uh, on the left? QN. QN. You factor out QN, you get this, and then this is what they end up stating in the book. How do you get from here to here? Well, you divide by this, but then what do you do with these two subtractions? Are you allowed to do that if you do both of them? Yeah, because you know this, right? A minus B is equal to what? B minus A. And A minus B is equal to negative B minus A. So if you flip two things, what's a negative over a negative? Positive. So if you flip both of these and then divide, you get this. Okay, is that better to plug the number 10 into? Yeah. yeah. That's the explicit definition, right? You get the 10, not the, this is the concentration after the 10th dosage. This is also really nice because what happens if I said, what's the concentration after the 100? Could you plug it in there? Absolutely. Oh, what happens as n goes to infinity? What happens to this as n goes to infinity? It's still tiny, it goes away. You get 250. Oh, wait. 250 was our initial value, right? What did we call that in the formula that you end up using? A. This right here is your A value. What's this? R. Your R value. So when R is between zero, between negative one and one, this goes to zero, and you get that formula you guys told me about. This is with specific numbers, but could we have done this math instead of 250? Could we have written A? Instead of 0.04, could we write R? Would it change any of the math? Nope, it wouldn't. Okay, so this is what you saw. You saw this in your book, right? In this case, x is the ratio. So the only reason I'm saying that out loud is because you're going to see it in your book, and there's no way for me to take it out of the book. Ratio should be r. Meh. Okay. Okay, so I would like you to get up at the board, find a partner, and do a, b, and c for me right here. So get up to the board, find a partner, maybe someone you haven't really worked with before, and try these. Let's have uh, three groups over there. Use three over there. Use them. Yep. Go, go, go. Chip, you can mix with a group of three for now, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. What do I mean by several partial sums? What do I mean by several partial sums? I mean, what is the. So, the first partial sum, like one would be one. What's the second partial sum? 1.5. 1. 1. What's the third partial sum? So just list out a few of them, okay? That's what I'd like you to do. This is just a warm up. This should take about one minute. I'm going to talk about 
Okay. <laughs> Give me about 30 more seconds here. Doesn't ask you to find that. Pause. Stop. 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 Are you retreating already? What do you guys think of this? What have you learned so far? What's one annoying thing you had to deal with? I like you can own up. It's like admitting it's it's, it's okay. It's okay. You come to terms with it. Yeah, it comes to be a pain in the ass, but you, you deal with it. Do you feel okay adding fractions? Are we doing okay with that? Okay, let's do a little bit more now. Do you agree with the groups around you? Take a look around you. Do you agree with the numbers people are coming up with? I see some people are figuring out convergence and divergence. That's great. Totally cool. Okay, let's change it up a little bit. Figure out if they're geometric. If they are, find the first term and the ratio. Try those right there. So there's going to be some dead, dead space in this video because I left it recording while we were chatting, but we'll get something in it. Get something in it. Um, what's the starting value on all of these? Can you easily identify the starting value? Hopefully. Yeah. It's the first value, right? Yay, there are your A values. Yay, exciting. Yay. What's the R value here? Negative two. Nice. R value here? Meh. What series is that? What's that called? Uh, harmonic. harmonic. This is a really fun one. We're going to run into this a lot. What about this one? What's the uh, R value here? Hey, what's the R value here? Sweet. What's the R value here? Ah, looks like it, but those constants, the twos, the threes, the fours, mess it up, right? Messes you up a little bit. Okay. So I could ask you at this point um, what they converge to, right? I could ask you. These are infinite geometric series, infinite geometric series. So that sum is going to be equal to A times 1 minus R. Oh, wait, we don't need that anymore. It's just A over what? That's right. Because that other thing just turns to 1. Yay, exciting. 
So could you, if I asked you to right now, if you didn't already, could you find me the, the sums for each of these? Yeah. So if they've got this, this, and this, if you haven't already, let's find them. So it's just a matter of division, right? So what do we end up with? Five over one minus five over what? Three. Excitement. Does that one diverge? Oh wait! Look at that. We used the formula. It gave us a gave us a number. What's the problem? It diverges. Have you ever seen math problems when they show you a math problem and then at the end it's like, I'm going to prove to you that 5 is equal to 7. Have you ever seen math like that? Yeah. Do you know why those work some of the times? Like what the, what the secret is to those? Somewhere in the explanation, they bury a divide by 0 error. Yeah. When you divide by 0, even if you don't mean to, weird things can happen. So here's the thing. We know that this diverges because the absolute value of the ratio is greater than 1, right? But could we still use that? We could put negative 2 into that, right? <laughs> Does this converge to 5 thirds? No. no. So just be careful, right? So this is meaningless because it doesn't actually tell us anything. So I'm still confused. You said how can you make the proof of five equals seven? There are lots of like math, quote unquote, like not joke, but like math things where like you can start with like five is equal to three or something like that and do a bunch of like, you can do a bunch of things like this big long quest and it ends with the statement like, I've proven five equals three. And you look at each step and you're like, oh, that step makes sense. That step makes sense. So if all of these steps make sense, then five equals three. But here's the thing, somewhere in there, they've hidden a divide by zero, which breaks which math. Yeah. breaks things. It just okay. breaks things. Dividing by zero breaks things. That's one of the ways. So over here, we could plug negative two into that. But does that tell us anything useful here? No. Yay. No, this diverges. Okay. This one, on the other hand, what's the first term? Two over one minus. So what's that come out to? Two over half is what? Four. Four. Yay. What about this one? One over one minus what? So that's one over, so that's two over three. It's kind of cool. And then this one, nada. Okay, get back to the board, ish. What's the ratio on this one? What's the ratio? On the first one, one half, nice. What's the ratio on this one? Negative one half, nice. Ratio on this one? Ratio on this one? Excellent. Very nice. OK, cool. So if we wanted to find the sum, the first one's finite, which means it's kind of annoying because if you don't have a calculator, you're not going to be able to find an exact. Well, you'll be able to find an exact answer. But do I want you to calculate 2 to the 10th by hand? No, no, no. But you could, what can you state? It's going to be 3 times 1 minus 1 half to the what power? 11. To the 11th. Good job. Over what? 1 minus what? I'm not asking rhetorical questions one here. Okay. One half, nice. Now what's the one number in there you might not have gotten correct? The 11, why? What do you think what an answer might be that is not quite correct that people would put in there? 10. 10, is it 10? No. Why not? The, the first one is to the zero. To the zero, so what, is the, what term are you at? You're at the, this one is the 11th term, right? Oh, spooky. Yeah, you could, if you wanted to write the explicit formula, it would be 3 over 2 to the n minus 1. Boom. So what about the next one? What about the next one? That's going to be negative 2 times what? 1 minus negative 1 half. Oh, do I need that whole thing? Why not? Because, the rate, because it's an infinite geometric series. This, yeah, you're right. That goes to 1. Yes, good. So what's this going to be? 2 over? Ah, do so. What's that come out to be? Negative two. I mean, sorry. <laughs> do people agree with that? That I do that correct? Am I okay? Yeah. Am I okay? Help me. I need help. Good. This one. What's the first term? Yeah. So one one over three to the fourth power. So one over eighty one. So this is going to be one over eighty one over one minus the ratio. That's 1 over 81 times what? 3 over 2? So what is that? 1 over 54? Is that it? Yeah. Is it one, can you help me out here? I, I need this. I really need this. 
Okay. Now, this one is the one that most commonly someone like trips and falls on a little bit. A little bit. You're cruising along. What's the starting value? 1 over 81, right? Okay. And then it's 1 minus 1 over 3 something all over 1 minus 1 over 3. What number goes there? 17. 17 goes there. Because how many terms are there from 4 to 20? There's the 4th, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. How many things are right there? 17 of them. So it's to the 17th. Now, do you bother simplifying that? What's the only simplification do you think I'd like on that? If you were so inclined. Do I want you to do? <laughs> yeah, make it, make it, uh, okay, 1 over 81 times 3 over 2 times 1 over 1. Do I, do I really care if you do that or not? Not really. What does this show me? If you stated that, what does that show me? You know how to do geometric series. That's what I'm asking you to do there, right? Because can you go any further really than this? Not so much. Do I ever want to see you doing out 3 to the 17th power by hand? No? I'm going to say no. 